in the sky, gazing far into the night. I raise my hand to the fire, but it's no use, cause you can't stop it from shining through. It's true, baby, let the light shine through. If you believe it's true, baby, won't you let the light Welcome to the latest Elite FPL podcast. Of course, it's the preview show. And not only are you joined by myself, Stephen, the usual Jason, but we have a special guest, Nim Freer. Good evening, Nim Freer. Hi, guys. How are you all? We're all good, my friend. It's a, it's a great honour to have you on the show and everything. And Jason, I'll hand it over to you and ask you, who's in the chat? Uh, good evening, good evening, everybody, and a special welcome to Nymphria, who's joined us for the first time on our channel. It's a great privilege to have you here. We've got a lot of the usual suspects in the chat. We've got Aman Dillon, we've got Matt D, we've got Ace Adventurer, we've got um, Aman Dillon, I think I may have said that already. Uh, we've got Darren Walsh, we've got uh, Arnie Arnold, we've got uh, Marix there, G Wiz is there, um, Dereco's in chat, Resi Desi, also known as Andy. Really? 
Uh, we've got FPL Buna. All the wiz- all the you know all the moderators are here. Um, v- VAR is in chat as well. The Daily Llama. We've got um, Dilly B. Hey Dilly B, how you doing? Um, my nephew there is in chat. Sultan Saeed, Ben Weedcroft. We've got One Rovers Vlogs. Mohit Tiwari, um, David Hackinson, Anarag. Uh, is in chat and Shaban mm-hmm. with Theo and the list goes on the list goes on guys welcome welcome Fantastic. welcome to the stream this evening previewing game week yeah as, as, as all your regulars will be aware it's the usual format today but because we've got a special guest we we want to do the old uh, get to uh, get to know our guest and it's Nymphria and like I said it'd be the usual thing of get to know Nymphria uh, do the preview show us what our team selections is if we've done any transfers what our captain choices are ahead of game week seven and then we're going to take your call so if you want to get your call if you want to come live on air with myself Jason and Nymphria just get into that discord waiting room and we'll be able to take your calls we are only going to be on till about 10 quarter past 10-ish so it's only going to be a bit of a short show it's not going to be four hours long but uh, <laughs> No, but no, but then for in all seriousness, welcome to the show and everything. And the first question I've, I want to ask you really is, how did you get into FPL and when did you start first playing this game? Cool. Um, it was a while ago now. I think it was about uh, 2011, I think. Wow. And I was at uni and my best friend was a big, big uh, footy fan. And he knew that I followed Arsenal. So... Uh, he said, oh, well, I play this football game online. You know, you should join up and come in the league with me and compete. And I was like, what's that all about then? And he explained it to me, you know, you have to choose this many players from all these different teams and things like that. And I was thinking, oh, God, I'd be absolutely rubbish at that because past Arsenal, (laughs) like, I I used to watch Match of the Day for Arsenal and then, like, switch off pretty much. (laughs) Um so I thought oh, I'd be absolutely rubbish at that. And I think he thought I might be a bit of easy fodder as well. So uh, <laughs> so he he set me up in the league. We we played for a season. I beat him fairly heavily ah. um, and, and then won again the season after. And it just kind of went from there, really. So, yeah, I got hooked. <laughs> So, so you, you played for, what is that now, what, eight years or whatever. What made you get into... FPL content creating yeah so I I pretty much noticed that there wasn't any female FPL um, YouTubers pretty much Uh, so there was lots well there wasn't lots but there was a fair few like ladies on Twitter and you know and writing blogs and obviously we were kind of starting down that road of getting a lot more female presenters and things but there was nobody really talking about FPL on YouTube and I thought you know, I, I might just give that a go. And, and I remember I did a couple of videos initially, you know, under, under myself, as myself, and it went horribly. You know, I got a lot of, you know, oh, you're female, what do you know about football or that kind really? of wow. malarkey. Um, and I kind of went away and I thought, I probably won't do this anymore. And then I, I, I kind of thought to myself, you know what, let, let me go down the gaming route because I'd, I'd always done a bit of gaming um, had a gaming persona, had streamed online gaming. So I thought, why don't I just go back and be my gaming persona and see how that goes? And it kind of just went from there, really. So. Yeah, I mean, you, I mean, sorry, I just I've completely forgot to turn on my light. Get the old, uh, <laughs> there he is. <laughs> the HD now. <laughs> completely forgot about all that. Um, so, then, so then what made you then... Uh, do the FPL Wildcats because you were the one that actually got the three of you, well, the four of you guys together. What what idea, what brainstorm got you into that? <laughs> uh, I think it was just trying to create a channel which had a bit more, again, going back to that gaming platform feel, you know, so everything that was out there at the time um, especially that had more than one person on it for FPL and YouTube was a bit more kind of advice giving, expert giving, kind of a lot more straight laced, let's say. And I think I just really wanted to bring it back to being a more chilled, you know, community feel platform where everybody got involved, guests, you know, we we chat to the people in the chat and actually allow to take their questions, you know, and things like that, rather than just you know almost you know pretending they're not there I suppose <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and so basically a lot like what you guys are doing now pretty much 
we, we're brothers in arms with the same kind of peeps. <laughs> no, absolutely. Yeah, which beautifully I just want to say, say uh, before we, yeah, I'm allowed to ask a question. I'm, I'm sure Steve O better. <laughs> um, no, no. Just, no, just me, like, following on from what you said about um, female FPLers, there's a lot on, um, well, a lot of ladies that play the game on Twitter yeah. and social media. I've, I, I noticed on Instagram, and mainly on Twitter. And I must admit, I am shocked to, um, that more haven't ventured onto youtube but then i'm a little bit naive because i know that the internet is the internet it's not mm. so easy but i think times are changing now and we're, st we're starting to see a lot of um women coming into the game um and and really outshining a lot of the men so so yeah long may it continue and um i need to turn my audio up apparently apparently i'm too quiet what about now is that better um <laughs> but yeah um no, massive props to you for um, venturing out and getting, you know, getting it all sorted, really. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's 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 definitely been a journey, and I hope that it inspires people and not just not just women, but anyone who feels like they're in the minority, pretty much, to do something. Hmm. You know, so yeah. Well, I've been. I mean, I've. I must admit, I've been. I've been hoping to have. A, a lady guest on the show for quite some time just to just to get some <laughs> uh, get guest. some represent like <laughs> a, a representation because because it's uh, it's great because I know that I know that um, we have lady view people you know, female viewers um, and it's just it's just great to to have to have you on um, representing you know the female FPL community. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> But yeah, Steve-O... Uh, Hopefully I do them justice now. <laughs> oh, no, no, by all means, you know, you're doing better than me this year, I think, aren't you? <laughs> I, I don't know, we'll, come, we'll probably come on to that a bit later. <laughs> <laughs> um, Steve, I need to go louder. Okay, one second, I'll sort that out in a moment. Steve-O, do you want to take over? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So we'll just move on to the old uh, predictions. I think that's what everybody cares about, to be honest with you, the uh, prediction point of view, because <laughs> as ever... It's the classic thing of myself, Jason, the, the the guest slash caller will go up against each other along with the history. And um, but there's a bit of a bragging rights at stake here in Infria because obviously we had Jay and O on the, the, a couple of weeks ago and uh, yeah. he, he got eight points. So I'm wondering if you will uh, come out on top and beat Jay and O. You never know. I doubt it. I mean, I'm pretty good with with like having feels about individual players. But when it comes to predictions of scores, I'm not so great there. So I think my wildcat is <laughs> probably probably going to beat me on that one. And I would have thought. <laughs> Do you actually base your team selections or thought processes based on predictions? Or do you literally just look at players individually themselves i know you've just kind of alluded to it if you want to just elaborate on that yeah no it's definitely more players for me player form um is the main one i do obviously take into account fixtures a little bit but um but yeah it's mainly form now because um i think we talked about it a bit when you were on our show and i tended to get a bit wrapped up last season in the whole fixture thing on twitter everybody goes on about you know oh they've got loads of really great fixtures now get them in you know and so i got wrapped up in that a lot whereas i think this season i've gone back to my original kind of gameplay which is go with form and if they happen to have great fixtures as well then you know it's almost like a double plus for that player Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. So for people that are watching this that are brand new to the show, the way I calculate the scoring is quite simple, really. If you get the score completely bang on the money, you get three points. If it's close enough, you get two points. If you get uh, if the outcome just in general right, you get one point. Uh, what I always do is I reveal what the history suggests the score would be. And I also give a little statistic. Now, usually the statistic throws up um, something that's kind of near enough the mark. So the most oddest one, I think, this season so far is the fact that Last week it was, oh, who was it? Who was Southampton playing last week? Remind me, I've completely forgotten. It was. Da -da -da. Uh, happened more than three days ago. I can't remember. Hang on. <laughs> oh, here we are. No, it was Sheffield United. Yeah. So. In oh, game so, five, do you know what? I completely forgot as well. We were yeah. we're brilliant, aren't we? Look at us. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was Sheffield United versus Southampton. Yeah, because it was Sorry, a game, in, in game week five, and the oddest one is the fact that. In the last six fixes between these teams, there's been four red it was cards. Bournemouth, was... mate. Yeah, no, I know that. I'm just saying that game week five. I... Jason's not listening, everybody. Okay, okay. But um, <laughs> in that specific fixture, there were 
four red cards in the last six. And of course, there was another red card in that. It's, it's always the statistics always seem to throw up a very common theme that seems to happen in ma these matches. And of course, as ever, the history will be suggesting of the popular captain picks, which one to choose. And this week, there are six of them. Uh, Sun, Kane, Sterling, Aguero, Kevin De Bruyne and Aubameyang. I would put Salah and Mane in there or Firmino, but unfortunately, I've got no history on them and whatever. But <laughs> So let's just kick things off. It's Sheffield United versus Liverpool. It's the lunchtime kickoff on Saturday. And I think, Jason, Nymphria, I think it's going to be a comfortable 2-0 victory to Liverpool. Yeah. Um, then for you, you, go, you go next, it's fine. Yeah, um, there's been two wins apiece and two draws between these two, believe it or not. So it's a lot closer than it looks. Uh, Liverpool targeting the 16th straight victory. Uh, Bramall Lane is one of the three grounds Liverpool played out without winning in the Premier League, I believe, in three matches. So, it, But it is a whole new Liverpool team, you know. Uh, I think it'll be 2-1 to Liverpool. Personally. Nim, have you been reading the uh, whoscored.com? <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing a bit of research. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, I think this this is going to be an easy win for Liverpool. I'm, I'm not going to give Sheffield United the goal. I'm going to go 2-0 to Liverpool. Oh, 2-0. Yeah. As, as Nim Free has just said, uh, the history is suggesting 2-1. Uh, there's only been four... Um, four matches between these two teams two of them in the cup and two in the Premier League but at Bramall Lane Sheffield United are unbeaten but admittedly this is all the way back as Nymphria said is in 2003 and 2007 so you may want to as Nim said it's a completely different Liverpool side here now then, moving on to Aston Villa Burnley, I always say that we never lose. Oh, I think I think I just want to just go through a few of the through the guys in chat's predictions as well because they've been putting in some. So I just want to quickly say that uh, Resi Daisy saying two 0 to Liverpool, F. Pabuna saying three 0 to Liverpool, Phil Potter saying three 0 to Liverpool. Everyone's pretty much saying three 0 Liverpool. Darren Walsh, um, Ace Adventurer says two 0 to Liverpool. I think everyone's going with a Liverpool win. Surprise, surprise. You'll be shocked. But they're all thinking that Liverpool will actually keep a clean sheet this time. Are, uh... yeah, a lot of them are, yeah. Is my, is my <laughs> mic, is it my mic better now? Um, just let me know. I, I'm hoping they don't because, well, I say that. I'm not actually sure if I'm playing Lundstrom yet. But if I play Lundstrom, then <laughs> hopefully they don't and he scores. But if I don't <laughs> play Lundstrom, then... <laughs> I've literally, literally just taken out my team. Now, moving on to Aston Villa versus Burnley. I always bang on about the fact that Burnley always do well against teams around us. In other words, the relegation tripe. And I think this game, we're just going to cancel each other out. I think that mm. it's going to end up being 1-1 between the pair of us, Nymphria? Yeah, I had, I had the same because they've, they've had a one, one a piece and four draws, haven't they? Something like that. So I, I think two all, personally. Two, you think, but will you think we're going to score two goals? <laughs> I do. I do. I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> I'm going go to go 2-1 to Villa. 2-1 to Villa, Jason. Yeah, that's what the history is saying. Aston Villa have won three out of the last six. That, uh, three of those being at home, of course. Pretty a low scoring game, to be honest with you. There's only been two games with more than three goals in. So, yeah, it looks like it's not exactly going to be the most uh, highest scoring game this uh, particular game. Now, on to free scoring Bournemouth, on to what I would say is the in form West Ham United. Is it then three? Is it three clean sheets in a row for West Ham now? Yeah, I think so. Um, and West Ham are looking for their fourth win in five matches, something like that. Yeah, so obviously West Ham had that horrific result against Oxford. I don't care what kind of lineup they would have put out. I think it's disgusting that uh, they lose 4-0. I, I, yeah. I think Bournemouth have got the upper hand here, and I think that they're going to go get through this 2-1 them for you. Yeah, I, I think it'll be the Cherries as well. I'm saying 3-1, though. I'm going to reckon a bit of a Wilson King... Uh, show up show <laughs> yeah I think I, I think Bournemouth yeah I've, they've got the firepower to get through West Ham and I think it's going to be a case of Bournemouth scoring more than West Ham I think there's going to be goals for both teams I'm going to go with a 3-1 win to Bournemouth the history is going 2-1 Bournemouth in the last six they've won three drawn two and only lost the one there's been 19 goals in this fixture, 11 for Bournemouth and 8 for West Ham. So it looks like it could be goals going on in there. Now they're moving on to uh, uh, this? the free-flowing, <laughs> free-scoring Chelsea versus Brighton. 
I initially thought 4-1 to Chelsea, but then I realised actually Brighton aren't actually as bad as that, so I've just deducted a goal there, and I'm going to go 3-1, <laughs> Nim. <then. laughs> yeah, um, I, I don't see anything changing. Uh, Chelsea, I think, have won like, nearly all of their matches <laughs> against Brighton, so I'm actually... Jules will hate me for saying this. I'm sorry, Jules Breach. <laughs> 3-0 to Chelsea, I think. <laughs> oh, a clean sheet again in there. And, and how, many goals, how many goals are Tammy Abraham going to get, Nim? Um, hopefully lots. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, thanks. none yeah. now that I have him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to go one less. I'm going to go 2-0 to Chelsea on that one, and I'm hoping Tammy gets involved in both of them. Ooh, well, Chelsea have won four out of them. They've only played each other five times. Uh, Chelsea have won four. Uh, one of the uh, games being a friendly, which uh, Chelsea lost 3-1. But within this game of the four Premier League matches, uh, Chelsea have actually kept three clean sheets. So hopefully we could be looking at a clean sheet for Chelsea there. And anybody with got... uh, that Tamori or whatever. God, I should have got that The Tamori, Tamori. Yeah, you're bigging him up, Steve. I mean, it's a bit of a... I think it's a case of will Chelsea keep clean sheets though, isn't it? And we all know what Zuma has done over the last you know, previous six game weeks. But we're looking at um, the chat here. Um, th- again, it's all about the Chelsea won't keep a clean sheet. People are just saying they they aren't going to keep a clean sheet. FPL Aguero, 1-1. Uh, Dilly B says 3-1. We've got Ace Adventure saying 2-1. 2-1 says Yash. 5-1 says Gravy Dave. All right. Um, Alexander Todorov, <laughs> um, how much points do you have in the prediction score game? Not enough. That's the answer. Um, Orm Rovers Vogue <laughs> says 3 1. And Man Dillon says 4 1. And Shano says 3 0 to Chelsea. Um, and uh, well, 1 0 to Brighton to Mori and goal? Nah, they'd be silly, David. That ain't going to happen. People, people would be very <laughs> upset hope, if that I did think. happen. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, so moving on to the the next yeah, what, yeah C- next. Crystal Palace versus Norwich. I think this is one of the ones. Uh, this really isn't for the neutrals. This is for your die-hard uh, Crystal Palace fans and Norwich fans. I think this is going to be a terrible game. Uh, neither Norwich are awful away from home. Crystal Palace are awful at home. Uh, Crystal Palace have just kept clean sheets galore, and I think they're just going to edge this. Uh, Nim, I'm going to go one nil to Crystal Palace. Yeah, I was reading earlier, Crystal Palace are unbeaten in their last five Premier League home matches. And obviously, as you were saying, Norwich, terrible, <laughs> terrible at the minute. Um, despite that, Norwich have beaten Palace four times, apparently. <laughs> so I still think it'll be Palace. I'm going to go with my at McTavius pod partner. Yeah, go go oh. for Palace. And I'm going to go big as well. 3-1. To Palace. Wow. Go on, are you? Right. Do it for Nim. <laughs> Norwich. I, just, I just fancied having a random pick on one of them and going completely out there. So I'm going to, yeah, just going to say it's going to be a Palace day. My goodness. Palace Jake. Army. <laughs> De- decent defence versus good, very good attack. Um, I'm going to go with a. Oh, God. Oh my god! I'm gonna go with two one to Norwich. This is, <laughs> this is hard. Two one to Norwich with Pookie getting no, Jake, getting Jake, in on goal. Jason's notorious nerd on here for um, taking forever to predict really pointless games. But when it comes to big games like I don't know, in this case, Man United Split Arsenal, second, it'd be like yeah. two one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was the result, Jason? <laughs> anyway, I said two one to, to to Norwich, mate. Yeah. Two months in Norwich. Yeah. Well, the history um, is going to go to go one nil to Crystal Palace. There's been three one nils in this fixture. Two for Crystal Palace, one for Norwich. There's only been nine goals scored in the last six fixtures, and uh, there's been four clean sheets. So it does look like it's going to be a, a low scoring game. Now, finally, on to a game where there's potential captaincy option. I know FPL Booner he brought in Harry Kane, I believe, back in again. And it's Spurs versus Southampton. Spurs are absolutely atrocious at the moment, especially on the road. I heard some mental statistic that they've only won like eight games in the last 26 or so. I can't specifically remember, but it's something ludicrous like that. I think they should have enough for Southampton here. And I, I'm going to go with a, a professional, as Dan used to say, 2-0 win to Spurs. Oh, yeah, wow. I certainly hope so. I've brought Son in, <laughs> so I need... I need I... <laughs> <laughs> I need Spurs to do something this uh, this game week um, to pay back my minus four. I'm going to go with Spurs. I'm going to agree with you, Steve. 2-0 to, to Spurs. Yeah. Lim? 
Yeah, there's there's only one point between Spurs and Southampton, believe it or not, with six places really? between them. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, I I think this could end up being a close game. I don't know what happened these last two uh, these last two picks when I was thinking about them earlier because I've gone for three two to Spurs. Oh wow. <laughs> So, are you, are you predicting goals for any team that can't seem to score goals and the team yeah. that score goals? I just that? think, why not? You know, give them a bit of confidence, a bit of positivity. Exactly. Why not? Just Harry. I hope it's not Harry, but it probably will be. <laughs> well, I don't know. I'll go into the history for captaincy in a minute. I'm going to reverse it. But the, the history is going 3 1 to Spurs. Uh, Tottenham scored 16 goals. In this, Southampton only scored eight. And um, Tottenham are actually unbeaten in this particular fixture. But um, if this particular game was away from home, actually, uh, Southampton have, um, have won one and drawn one. So maybe well, this favours the home I know, team. I know our moderator, um, FPL Booner, um, obviously a Spurs fan, has brought, brought, in, brought in Harry Kane, captain in him. He's got Kane, Ooh, Son and wow. Aurier. What could go See, wrong? See, he says. knows about the three-two. Wow. <laughs> he knows about the three-two. <laughs> well, the history regarding captaincy. So again, Booner, I know you're the only one that said you're going to go with the captaincy choice here, but if you own Son or Kane, uh, Son, he started four times and been a sub twice. So he's actually featured in all six fixtures. Uh, he's got three goals and two assists. Mm. Uh, Harry Kane, he started five games, has got seven goals and one assist. But I'll preface that by saying that... How many of those of are day, penalties? As Boone Roy says, <laughs> Harry Kane's playing too deep and Son is taking up that role. So I would recommend, me personally, going on that with the history, I'd recommend going with Son as captaincy. But officially it's saying Kane, but I would go with uh, Son personally there uh, moving on to god this game is going to be awful again another <laughs> one with crystal palace wolves it's a uh, crystal palace norris it's it's wolves versus watford uh, could they cancel each other out with a dying <laughs> nil nil one one i don't think so wolves have finally had a rest and i think they're going to edge this two one them yeah i actually agree with you yeah, I think 2-1 as well. It, it doesn't get any closer between the bottom two sides, does it? And I think they've won a match piece between each other. So, yeah, I, I, I think I think Wolves will, I don't know, like you said, maybe just a bit of a rest. Yeah, uh, Watford have been a bit edgy. 2-1 as well, yeah. Jason? Oh. I think it's. Gonna, I think uh, I'm, I'm going to spend a few minutes on this one. <laughs> no, just, this is going to be the game. This is going to be the game of the weekend. Um, I'm certainly going to make sure I watch it, um, which I can't because it's the three o'clock. But um, it's Wolves versus <laughs> Watford, and I'm going to go with a. Let me drink a bit of coffee. Three one Wolves. Jesus, blimey. <laughs> three one to wolves wow well the history is completely going against that it. it's going to go one one there's been two wins apiece and two draws 17 goals in this specific pe- uh, fixture and there's been two clean sheets apiece in the last six right then finally on to another captaincy game with everton versus man city do you know what i think man city are just going to do a professional job here and i'm going to go two nil mm. well i've been reading up about history on this game and I'm not convinced Aguero is yeah. going to be a great captain mm-hmm. pick <laughs> and I'm a little bit worried you might have him because I've got him as my captain yeah absolutely <laughs> and I'm feeling worried yeah. Um, yeah. I think this could be the game where Raheem Sterling punishes all mm. of his sellers um, like myself um, oh or- no that's silly <laughs> I mean, yeah, Didn't well, <laughs> I, I, um, I can't see anything other than a, a mass, well, just, just a mass of goals really for for City. Um, that if I don't think Everton are gonna, gonna do anything, and if you have got Dinya, put him on your bench. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'm gonna go with four nil to Man City. Wow, gosh, and. And God knows where those goals are coming from. Honestly, I have no idea. <laughs> I was confident Aguero was going to get something at Watford, but obviously, uh, um, I'm just um, eight I'm... games and no goals or something, isn't it? Oh, who's that? Something like Aguero. No, he scored. 
got a penalty. Oh, okay. That's okay. He then. got the assist. He got an assist, wasn't it? <laughs> but um, but no, he's not scoring as. I mean, oh no, I, I as mean a score line. against Everton. Oh, I beg your pardon. Sorry, yeah, yeah against Everton. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's sorry. I put my beg your pardon. Yeah, he's not got a great record against Everton. Just doesn't like Goodison Park, it seems. Um, mm-hmm. So will I hold true to my captain armband pick with Aguero? That is a question. Um, Steve O, um, you want to read out the history on this? Well, I was, I was expecting what, uh, what Nim's uh, prediction is. First. Oh, sorry, Nim. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I have a stat: Everton have won ten Premier League matches at home against their reign against reigning champions. So actually, <laughs> if wow. if anyone can do it, Everton might actually do it. And because I've sold Dinia, he'll probably likely be the one to score. Yeah. So I still think City will win, but I'm saying that it'll be a lot closer. And I think there'll be goals in this game as well. I'm saying 3-2. Wow. wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, where, where do you think Everton are going to score? They can't score against um, Sigurdsson, Sheffield United. Dinia. <laughs> Well, I know that I know that Capkin Gaming's got rid of Sigurdsson now, so who well, knows? We know what well, well, we know it, it's on the cards, isn't it? It's on the cards. <laughs> Will City yeah. keep a clean sheet? That's the question. Um, all those Otamendi owners. Maybe I'm there. just hoping because I've sold Sinchenko and didn't get a City defender in. Or maybe I'm just, you know, it's hope that Everton will score. A Wobi, a Wobi will score and punish me now. You yes. watch. You know, you know it's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, the guys are predicting in chat 2-1 to City, Vince Chapman says 2-1 um, to the Blues only time I ever support, okay 2-1 Sim- so, uh, to the Blues, I, I very much doubt it, 3-0 um, City uh, David Hackinson 3-0 um, to City Gabriel, I mean it all going with like 2s and 3s 3-1 um, says Llama um, going to be tight, 2-0 a tight 2-0, okay um, Everton 8, City 0 okay um, put a bet on that. <laughs> put a bet on that. Yeah, every week, Jason. <laughs> yeah, I know. That right. sounds like something, some sort of prediction I would make. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I'm, I'm going to shut up because I made that prediction a few weeks ago, and uh, we all know what happened there, don't we? <laughs> Absolutely. Against yeah. Norwich, yeah. But uh, uh, moving, yeah, moving on. I was gonna, m- moving on to this, moving on to the history of that game. It's just it's suggesting three-one to City. Man City have only won three out of the last six. There's been two draws in this game. One Everton win, of course. Of the last three, though, there's been two three ones and a two nil victory to Man City. Uh, this, yeah, you are right, Jason. The captaincy choices are absolutely awful for for this for statistics wise for this game. The history, anyway. Uh, Sterling, Aguero, Kevin De Bruyne. Um, Sterling started three times. Has made one sub. Uh, sorry. Three. I can't even read my own writing here. What am I doing here? He's he's made three substitute appearances and has started one, two, three games. So three games he started. He's made three substitute appearances as well. Has only got two goals. Aguero. He's only made three starts and has got zero. And he's also missed a penalty in that time. And in the same game. Kevin De Bruyne also missed a penalty, and uh, Kevin De Bruyne started four times and made two substitute appearances and has a goal and assist. So it's not looking particularly great from the history point of view for Aguero, Sterling, and KDB. But again, as Nim said about Liverpool, slightly different um, team this time round. I think that uh, those three particular are key to everything Man City do. Uh, moving on to the only Sunday game. Again, don't think this is going to be a lot of fun to watch. And it's Leicester versus Newcastle. And Only I'm going to go 2-0 to Leicester. One game on the Sunday. Mm. What, what did you say it was going to be to Leicester, sorry? 2-0 to Leicester. Um, Nim, you go next. I, I think I'm going to go uh, for a, a low draw on this one. So like a one all or a 2 all, I think. <laughs> Are you going to ask me to nail one of those down? Of course I am, yes. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's horrible. Um, you you want to beat J&O, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll err on the side of caution with this one. It's just probably the one I shouldn't be airing on the side of caution, but I'll say one all on this one. One one. Go on then, Jason. Um, everything's telling me that Leicester's got enough to win this game. I, I'm going to go one nil. Leicester. 
One nil to Leicester. Uh, well, the last four Newcastle have won two and drawn one. There's been clean, three clean sheets in the last six, two of them being for Leicester. So, could be Newcastle's weekend. Now then, on to the Ninfria Jason Derby. It's Monday night football. Uh, we are going to be doing a live show that evening, I believe. So, uh, it's Man United versus Arsenal, and. Um, it, or it, it, it's the Nymphria versus Jason Derby, or as I call it, the Bunch of Clowns Derby, because these two teams are just jokers. Oh, I thought you were calling us clowns. <laughs> 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 it's going to say a bit insulting. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Thanks. <laughs> no, no, that's Man United and Arsenal, just awful, awful teams. And I heard a statistic earlier on that under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer or something, Man United have only scored three... I've only scored twice, three times underneath Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. So they've only scored... Two well, goals or more, three goals times. Or more, three times under Solskjaer, mm. which is atrocious. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I think Arsenal should beat Man U. But Dan, as he keeps banging on about, their record at Old Trafford is atrocious. I'm still going to go with the Arsenal win here, and I'm going to go edging it. I originally had it 3-2, but because I heard that statistic, I'm going to go 2-1 to Arsenal, Nymphria. How are you feeling about this particular game? Oh, I hate this matchup. There's lots of history between these two clubs. Uh, Man United are unbeaten in their last Premier League home games against Arsenal, mm. actually. So, um, and our away form hasn't been great, let's be honest. You know what? I genuinely feel like Greenwood will punish me for selling him this week and he'll score against us. Yeah, I, I'm a bit worried about that because he's young, he's got pace and our defence is all over the place at the moment. I actually think Man United will win it 2-1, so I'm going opposite to you. <laughs> oh, Jason, Nim's uh, sticking to United front. What about you as a United fan? I'm not confident. I think Arsenal. <laughs> I think Arsenal are going to rip our defence to shreds. I really do. I think um, it's a weird one because United's mid attack are obviously a bit toothless at the moment, and Arsenal with a Pepe and a Bamiang are just I'm a sub bias behind. It just, it just screams quality to me, and I'm very I'm really worried um, that United's defence isn't going to get enough protection um, from the defensive midfield. I think there's going to be a lot of gaps for Bamiang to squeeze behind and. I just and Pepe, I can just see it happening now. David de Gea is going to have to have a masterclass in goal to to ensure that we win this game. We'll only win this game if he has a game, if he's man of the match, and I think we'll win the game one nil or something if in the in the event that that hmm. happens. But I I certainly think that United are going to be in a bit of trouble. Um, I know history's on United's favour, but it's it's a different United team at the moment. It doesn't scream comp- confidence to me. There's a bit of a slump, um, a massive slump at the moment. And I, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I'm going to go with 2-1 to Arsenal, opposite to Nymphria. Yeah. We're both we go, we're both putting our teams down. I, I honestly yeah. think that I, I'm worried. <laughs> I'm worried. That's the sign of the times, though. Yeah. I, think that's, I think that goes to show how much the league has changed, as in... Mm. You wouldn't have really seen that in previous times. Arsenal, Man United fans, we'd you know we'd be confident in our sides. Mm. We'd you know be up for it. We'd be looking to get wins at these sorts of games. But you know it's shifted where we used to be kind of absolutely nailed on for a top six place. That isn't the case anymore. You know it, it that now goes to the likes of mm. your Liverpool and your City. So I think it just goes to show how times have changed a bit. But what my my issue with Arsenal is that they've actually got really really good players. It's just that they can't seem to perform. What what do you personally put that down to? I just think that it's it's a lack of confidence um, coming from the mid central mid and the defence. Personally, I think we your likes of Aubameyang and Ceballos and Pepe and and Lacazette when when he's you know when he's fit they can do everything in the world mm. and score as many goals as they want but if the you know with the likes of Xhaka or Ozil or you know any one of our defenders 
makes silly little mistakes or doesn't tackle when they're supposed to make silly tackles, uh, then you know we you know everything's been null and void from what they've done previously. So I think it's just that it's it's not a lack of liking teammates it's not a lack of camaraderie i don't think it's anything like that i just think it is the confidence that the that they they don't have the confidence in each other to keep the the clean sheet the defense when when the ball goes backwards to trust that there's a solid line there to take care of it and i, I think there's only one way to cure that and, and that is winning games with clean sheets you know if you look at liverpool they're kind of you know, unrecognisable now with their with their defence they have now. You know, compared to what they used to have, and and that gives the likes of Salah and Mane and Firmino that freedom to go forward and create and just always think when the ball goes backwards. Yeah, if I want to chase back for it and get it, I can, but I don't have to. You know, my defence mm. is there for me, so I, I think it's pretty much that. <laughs> no, absolutely well. Yeah, the history is suggesting a tight game as well. It's going to go two one to Chelsea, uh, to Chelsea, to Man U. Uh, to Man U. Uh, yeah. They have in the last six. They've been three <laughs> apiece. There's been 19 goals in this specific fixture. Arsenal with nine and Man United coming out on top with ten. So yeah, uh, I've got a Bamiang down. There was a potential captaincy. He started four games versus United. And they scored two goals. He is my captaincy at the moment. Um, I'm pretty confident, actually, on having a Bamiyang as my captain. I'm hoping it pays off. Bit of Monday night football drama, yeah, which links us beautifully, Jason, into um, myself, yours, and more importantly, Nim Free's team selections ahead of the game week, mate. Yeah, absolutely, it does. And um, Nim Free, I don't know if you've managed to post your team at all in the team screenshots on Discord. If not, I I haven't, I'm afraid. <laughs> um, are you able to? What are you? What league are you in? Any leagues that I can find you in? Um, I can quickly message you on Twitter my ID if that helps. Does that help? Again. Would you be able to find my yeah, ID? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If you just message it me, and I'll uh, pull it up in a moment. So, Steve, let's bring um, your team up first and foremost. I'll open it up in in the screenshots. One second. Right. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's the, it's the standard three-five-two formation. I, I was thinking of playing Greenwood, if I'm honest with you, Jason. I was thinking, hmm, I wonder if he could actually do something against Man United. To be honest with you, he ain't going to start. And yeah, it's. You still sad. don't think he'll start even after? I that? think I think he will. Yeah, I yeah. think he will. Yeah, as yeah well. I think he will. Yeah, just yeah. just to annoy me for selling him. <laughs> he will. He's got I to. Don't... I mean, he's got to. Why does he have to? Because he's scoring goals and United haven't got any strikers, so it's it, to me it's a no-brainer for Oli. And if he doesn't, he's going to face the wrath of United supporters. Then again, well, I've been saying that for weeks. Like I, know, I feel I like you should have started him weeks ago. Know, you know, even yeah. even with Rashford and Martial, and he hasn't done it. So I I'm confused. <laughs> well, what I'll, what I'll probably do is I'll probably drop Cantwell. If anybody for Greenwood of the of the of the two Norwich players, it would be Cantwell for Greenwood. If anything, um, I'll have to listen out for Solskjaer's press conference. I don't think he'll start, but that's just um, based on the fact that this well, game. Are we going to play? And... I mean, we've Vince Chapman says, are we playing Matta and Lingard again? Like, it's Arsenal. We need pace to exploit that defence. And if he doesn't play Greenwood, there's going to be there's going to be uproar. I'm telling you now. There's going to be up, up the, the forum, the main night forums, the supporters clubs, they're all going to be going mad. Um, United stand, they're all going to be going up. <laughs> it's going to be a revolt. Um, but yeah, it'll be, it's a funny old season so far. Um, I've got your team up here. Um, I would, if I was you, I would be um, tempted to, to play Greenwood over Campwell. Yeah, I mean, I've already done my transfer. So for people that don't know, I made my transfer on was it Saturday or Sunday evening when I did the when I did the pod I can't remember now but either way I did Otamendi in for Zinchenko I think that I want to get a Man City defender in for their upcoming fixtures and everything and uh, I hear a lot of people as well have been asking me about doing a wild card and stuff no I have I've already explained my position I'm using game week seven and eight 
as an indicator as where my, if I'll ask him free in a second actually about that um I'm using these two game weeks as an indicator as to where my season's going um and if I need to wild card it will be done during the international break but then Freya, how are you finding this specific season so far in the sense of there's a lot of people like myself that have they 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 think that they've we've got a really good team, but they just don't seem to be performing. It's in that situation where it's like, do I wild card? Do I not wild card? And try and keep faith with a team that I've already got. I mean, how are you finding it with your team? But you're doing really well, though, aren't you this year? Well, I'm I'm two two hundred and seventeen thousand, I think, and that's at the it. minute. Um, probably a bit better than I usually do I don't tend to start well if I'm honest (laughs) I have always I think even you know from the very beginning of playing FPL I never really tend to do well early on I always kind of like win or do well and better in my later half of the league so this is new territory for me (laughs) and a little bit worrying (laughs) because I'm not used to you're not used to being in this sort of position it is it is an odd season as in I think the price changes are definitely a lot um more hectic. Uh they seem to be happening happening a lot quicker. We did see it last season, but I think we're really seeing it this season. And that is putting a lot of pressure on early moves, uh people wildcarding maybe a lot earlier than they would have done. So I think it's kind of widely known that in the Twitter universe that international break is kind of the time to wildcard but I think we have to remember there is an FPL universe outside of that (laughs) and I don't think that's necessarily always the thought process for them however I I would be interested I I don't know the stats but I would have thought um, that a fair few have jumped on the wildcard a lot earlier than they would have done in previous years just because they you know because of the price changes and things well I jumped on the wildcard for for Man City, basically. Yeah, same. For Aguero. And, uh, for Aguero. <laughs> and um, yeah, yeah, I'm waiting. Still waiting for him to pay me back. But um, <laughs> it's been a bit, of, a bit of a roller coaster ride for me the last few weeks. Um, Steve, that team is a few people commenting on it saying it's a beautiful team. It is a beautiful. Yeah, team. I've just taken. Um, um, I've just taken Campbell out for Greenwood. I think that I'd rather. I, I think so. Have done yeah. that. But I think so. Yeah. I'm going with them. Like I said, I've gone with a Bamian captaincy. I just. I think I'd be tempted to go with Sterling, mate. I really would. I've got this horrible feeling that he's going to punish me for getting rid of him. Mm. Really yeah. I'm quite well, tempted by Sterling as well. I've got Aguero, Aguero and Sterling, and I'm, yeah, I think like I, I really, really kind of agonised over and get, getting KDB this week um, for Sterling. Uh, and I've known now for probably the last two or three weeks that at some point either Aguero or Sterling has to go in order for me to get KDB. And then last week was pretty much kind of, it was awful. It was just awful. It was horrible watching that slaughter by KDB. Yeah. Um, mm. And it really hurt my ranks as well. So like Sunday saved me, my other players, they pretty much saved me. Uh, so otherwise... You know, I I wouldn't be at two hundred. I'd be nearly six, seven, eight hundred k. I was, I was praying that um, Lundstrom would come off my bench for that twelve points, but guess <laughs> what? Daniel James played. And, oh uh, no! Yeah, so and Awobi as well. Um, thank you. Yeah, oh. that, that was a bit of a, a crazy punt, but uh, anyway, um, I know a lot of people benefit from those Lundstrom points. Well done to you guys, but I wasn't so lucky. I've got your team now in in the um, well, basically on screen. Um, for your last yeah. week's points. So um, mm-hmm. looking at it now, um, let's bring it a bit, a bit bigger. I, I'm i looking at it. So have you, what have you done Zinchenko out, you said? Yeah, so I've done a minus four and I've yeah. done three changes. And I have basically fleeced my defence <laughs> okay. for all its money. <laughs> yeah. And I've invested it up top and um, directly up top so so i have taken zinchenko and dina out and uh greenwood for rico uh soyuncu and abraham okay yeah i i have a bit of a feeling about abraham for free formation then yeah a bit a bit of a feeling for abraham and I just kind of, his ownership is starting to scare me a bit now. Mm. And the only way I could see 
other like other than what I did to get him in would have been to drop Aguero and I was somewhere between doing the same as Stevo this week so I was pretty much these two options it was Stevo's option of literally going Zinchenko to Otamendi and rolling my my transfer down the line and having two transfers next week or this particular move that I did and it I think it was just the Tammy thing that like, I just got too nervous about not owning him. Otherwise, I would have done Steve-O's pick, I think, and been so very it, happy with that. So is it going to be Alexander-Arnold, Mings, and Rico in your back? Back three? Um, who have I got at the minute? Bear with me and me bring the screen up. So at the moment, I'm playing Pope, Trent, uh, Sayunchu, and Mings. Oh, Sayunchu. Okay, yeah, yeah, Mings, yeah. 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 Um, Sterling, Salah, McKinn and Mount in midfield yeah. uh, Abraham, Puki, Aguero up front Aguero's captain at the minute and then on my bench not sure about who's my bench first, order who's yet who's your first serve that's the question Cantwell yeah. Cantwell. Cantwell at yeah, the minute yeah the, the Rico up. behind and then Lundstrom behind him I'm not sure mm. though whether they should be the other, the other way around well yeah. I would probably be playing putting Cantwell ahead of Rico personally I wouldn't always bank on anything from Rico um but yeah i think i think you've got a bench order right there um i mean the team's looking really good um who's, who's your captain choice going to be that's the question is, yeah. it gonna, is it going to be aguero or sterling that's that's i mean that's the question isn't like it? the last few weeks it's felt like i've wanted to go for sterling because it's felt like he's going to be doing better but i've gone with aguero i was saying this in the wildcats on tuesday I've yeah. gone with Aguero the last two game weeks because I haven't been sure how much longer I have him in my squad. So because I know that KDB has to come in and I know that it's one of Sterling or Aguero that will go in order to, to get him in to fund that. Um, I've just kind of been going, because anyone who knows me knows I'm a little bit in love with Aguero. <laughs> um, yeah, you want to marry him? <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> if he asks. Uh, that I would... Well, no, Freya, we have a special guest on my... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I'll probably faint. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and you'd probably get the most views. <laughs> well, G Wiz has got contacts. We know that. So G Wiz, if you're watching, let's get it arranged. No, um, no, that's 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 um, looking a really solid team. I mean, if we bring my team up now on the screen. Yeah. So I've pretty much captained him the last two game weeks. Um, to kind of say, you know, I'm not sure how much longer I have you in my team, so go on, you know, do your best for me while I've while I've got you effectively. And what I was saying on Tuesday night to the lads was, I'm in a really difficult position now because my head is telling me that I should captain Sterling because I really feel like he's a better in away matches. You know, he's had a bit of a rest now. All of these sorts of things are kind of going around my head, and I'm thinking Sterling is the better option. Yet, like, Aguero has just been consistently ticking along. Yeah. So, yes, he hasn't got us the big hauls, maybe, Jace, that we, you know, that we, like, your KDBs or whatever have, have been doing um, as captains. But he has still been returning. And so it's very hard to now take the captaincy armband off of him oh, and give uh, yeah. it to a Sterling that's blank. Well, I haven't, got that, I haven't got that headache, have I? I haven't got the headache between him yeah. and so I I've got to decide whether or not I put it on the likes of uh, KDB or or Mane or even Tammy Abraham and I I, I I'm gonna naively keep it probably keep it on Aguero um, purely out of, maybe more out of stubbornness than anything else because um I've I've hedged my bets and <laughs> let's hope that it's the one well, time that let's to. let's just hope it's the one time the history is wrong. Um, it doesn't yeah. happen that often, but let's hope it is. Uh, I'm going to get my team up on the screen now. Um, so, for anyone watching for the first time, this is my team. It's um, undergone some changes in recent weeks, to say the least. Um, <laughs> we had a wild card, um, and then there was a massive failure, and then there was a minus 16. But the good news is I still managed to stay above Steve-O, so we're all good. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Um, I've done a minus four this week. Uh, I took out a Wobie. And um, I brought in Son. And I took out a Bamiyang. Raise a few eyebrows, I know. And I brought in Tammy Abraham. So I'm hoping that these two moves are going to pay back not only the minus four, 
and outscore the uh, the, the, the duo of Awobi and Bamiang. I mean, Awobi, I don't think anything from him. Um, um, so, Adrian in goal. I think this is going to be the, la- the the one of the final games probably now that I can benefit from having Adrian as a Liverpool asset in defence. Um, Allison's getting closer and closer, and um, we've got Rico, uh, <laughs> amazing back three. Uh, Rico, Loughton, and Matip, um, and then we've got Dan James against uh, Arsenal, home to Arsenal. Son, De Bruyne, and Mane. Now Mane's been pictured in training, so I'm I'm confident that he will play. Um, and again, it's the ownership of Mane. Um, it's not as high as Salah, and I'm hoping that Mane will steal the thunder and and the limelight away at uh, Sheffield. And um, got Abraham. Um, I echo Nimfrey's thoughts. It's the ownership's rising. I I can see him being a favourite for for Frank Lampard, and I I can see him scoring goals. And then that Brighton fixture is really hard to ignore. Um, Pukki away at Crystal Palace. I think people talking about getting rid of Pukki have gone mad. Personally, you got to keep him. Um, I did that once. I got punished. Um, hashtag City. And we got um, Aguero as captain. That's my team. So um, Adinho on the bench, Lundstrom on the bench, and Lansbury on the bench. And um, there we go. Um, what's your thoughts? Yeah, I, I think it's. it's a, I, I, I am actually quite worried <laughs> yeah. about your son and Abraham transfers. I think. I think they're. I think they're absolutely stunning. I think they're brilliant. And I think this week specifically is a great time to bring in those two players. Abraham up against Brighton is an easy fixture. Uh, Son, certainly, if he's playing up front against Southampton, I'd like to think that he'll get some a, a goal at least um, for you. So I think that that transfer is going to pay off massively. It's just down to really, like you said, who your captain seems going to be. But I, th- I think I think I think Aguero is prime to be honest with you for that for that specific role. Let's, let's hope so. Oh, are, we, are, we, are we ready to take calls, Jason? As ever, for, for people that want to um, get get your phone calls in and we'll get to speak to Nymphria live on wow. air. Wow, we need to get Nymphria on Discord. Nymphria. Oh, do I need to be signed in Discord, do I? Okay, yeah, yeah. bear with me. There we go. Right, so we get Nymphria into the Discord and we'll take some calls. Um, so Absolutely. If you, if you want to if you wanna come live on there with myself, Jason and Nymphria, all you got to do, you're all part of it, is get in the Discord waiting room and myself and Jason will be more than happy to take your calls to basically chat to Nymphria about your game. Can, your I, can I just... Game week. Sorry, can I just log in the server or do I have to download it? Um, what, where, have you got it on your laptop? Are you on your laptop? Yeah, just can I sign in on the normal normal website or do I have to download it? Um, it's probably better to download it. I would always download the app as opposed to signing in okay. using the browser. The browser's a bit buggy and slow. Okay, cool. So I'm going to have right. to... <clears throat> but yeah, just, just go in the waiting room. We've only got to, like I said, we've got about 35, 40 minutes left of the show tonight. And if you want to come live on there to discuss Game Week 7 and tell us about your teams, more importantly, if you have any questions from in here, I should be more than happy to take on um, some of the questions and um, yeah, it'll be all a uh, fun end game, so to speak. But uh, Jason, it looks like we've got a uh, brick god, the guy that suggested every single human being in FPL should get a Wobian. You've just got rid of him. Let's get brick god live on air. Okay, brick god, here we go. Good evening, brick god. You're on the FPL call in or the elite FPL call in, and um, it's uh, game week seven. We're predicting the uh, well, we've predicted the fixtures. Um, are you there? Yeah, hello, can you hear me? I can hear fine, Brick God. Um, can you hear us okay? Yeah, I can hear you. How you okay, doing? so what do you think about me getting rid of a, a Wobi? <laughs> <laughs> the way uh, Everton are trying to not score goals, I don't really blame you. I still got him last on my bench at the moment, but more importantly, he didn't even start last week. So that's the most worrying. Yeah, um, I, 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 I was trying to, I was trying to be patient with him, but um, I certainly mm-hmm. lost my patience last weekend, and um, I'm glad that I've got rid of him, to be honest with you. And um, how, how, <laughs> how, how, how was your team shaping up, uh, Brick God, for game week seven? Um, well, actually, the reason I called this is that I know you guys tried to act like you're not really a tips, a 
tips site, but you're no, no, whoa, 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 whoa. There's no acting about it. We are not a tip site, so please don't give us that absolute nonsense that we're acting. Me and Jason, <laughs> me, the 98 people that are part of the Cash Mini League, this is what we do it for. We're more than happy to get people on air and discuss things and give an opinion, opinion on what myself yeah. and Jason think. But when it comes to saying, you have to get this guy because of these fixtures, because his underlying statistic, I don't yeah. give a sh about that. Nearly swore, oh, no. I don't care about that. All I care about is the rivalry between the 98 people in the Cash League that we take seriously and bring a, a community together to discuss all things fantasy football. So please don't don't proclaim that we're acting or... Um, we 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 like to promote a discussion which will allow you as a viewer or as a caller to in, be informed enough to make your own mind up and listen to information that's that's essentially what we do we just talk and give an opinion well let's be honest it's on the rack Rick, Rick last... quiet jason just to let you know apparently according to the audience if you Am want I? to turn them up a bit Brick god is a bit quiet is he yeah, I just need to turn him up a bit. Yeah, I think it's his hand. Can you turn your mic up a little bit, Brick God? Hello, is that louder? In... Not amazingly loud, no. I've put you at 200% on, on Discord, so if you could... Well, I'll try to speak louder if that helps. Yeah, try to do that. There you go, try to speak louder. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, go for it, Brick God. You were going to say, just get it off your chest. Um... I was actually looking for a bit of advice this week because you guys are good at what you do. That pretty good rights last season. Okay. Captain okay. pick, I think, is a tough one this week. I've got, currently got it on Tammy Abraham. But like nice. Steve, nice. I've been thinking about Aubameyang. I also have Sterling in my team as well and Kevin De Bruyne. I'm just not sure where to put it at the moment. It's all about Tammy how Abraham. you want to... How, with any mini leagues that you're taking seriously or the overall ranking and stuff, where, where are you? How are you doing? For example, in my case, I'm doing rubbish. How are you doing? <laughs> uh, I'm not doing... I'm, I'm fourth out of like 15 people. It's not great. Fourth out of 15? That. That's, that's yeah. good. It's good. But the thing is, is that sometimes... Like last season, what I was really good at is picking a captain because I felt like I was quite brave and I wasn't afraid to pick a Jamie Vardy at a weird time or something like that. But now my captain picks seems to have gone to hell, really. Like this, I feel like this year is a lot harder. Yeah. I'm a bit almost scared to go off the, I say the normal temp salad, the De Bruyne's and stuff. Do you think this week is worth the risk on Abraham? I think so. I think it's not. Oh, I don't think it's a risk. I don't think it's a risk. You don't think it's a risk? Nah. Oh, okay. I think I think he's got goals on him, and it's goals a it's a beautiful him. fixture. It's a beautiful. Yeah, because I do feel like Chelsea. They don't okay, want to I'm in, lads. To... Where where do I go? Go into the waiting room. I'll drag you in. How how do I? Oh yeah, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Brick God, you need to you need to turn your speakers down a little bit. Turn I think we're hearing you on the. Hello. My there you go, no worries. Um, Nim, you just need to um, right-click uh, mine and Steve-O's name and turn our volume down so you don't hear us twice. Okay, I don't hear you once yet. Is that okay? <laughs> Sorry, there you go. No, but essentially, we'll ask Nim to how you feel. Do you want to take the risk or do you want to go on the safe? It's the same with me. I am willing to take that risk by putting the captaincy of Bamiang. It just about paid off um, Aston oh, Villa the other card. game week, and I really would have, I really would have wild carded if he had blanked uh, the other day. <laughs> I would have, I would have picked up the laptop, smashed it to pieces, and just almost given up on this game because if <laughs> Bamiang can't score against Aston Villa, then what is the point of me having him? But the point being is that depending on your situation, I. Th I'm going to state this now: is that it's, it's game week seven, and I think like with Jason's done with his minus 16 is minus four and whatever i think that we can still take those quote unquote risks um regarding um everything because it's not game week 30 yet uh nim you, you're you're somebody that, that you said last week that you were 80 points behind a rival last season and eventually caught up with them and stuff your yeah. thoughts on a risk risky captaincy picks 
at the start of the season, Brit God's got a bit of a um, an issue to fight, deciding whether to have Abraham, who is captain at the moment, or Kevin De Bruyne, Sterling, Aubameyang. Your thoughts on risky captain options in the start of the season? Yeah, um, I tend to stick with the pack early season, if I'm honest. So I'll tend to go to Twitter or I'll tend to go to Scout and look up um, the user the user polls on captaincy. And I, I will always tend to kind of take a bit of a, a kind of average of of the of the websites and Twitter and things, and mm. try and go with the most what I feel will be the most captained um, earlier on in the season to stay with the pack because that way, it, if it goes wrong, you know that it's going to go wrong for a lot, an awful lot of other people as well. Um, if you're trying to gain ground. If like you've, if you, I would never say if you have a feeling for a, for a player that's going to do well, not to captain them because you'll only regret not doing it if they do something. So if there's somebody that you really want to captain, then just do it. Don't let anybody else talk you out of it. Go for it and don't worry about it. You know, if it goes wrong, then at least you did what you wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Um, but in terms of like chasing the pack and things like that there's definitely pluses to it if you go risky and it works then brilliant but obviously it can work really dead against you as well especially this time of the season when to be honest the margins really are not that far apart you know they're really <clears throat> still quite slim yes. so thank you Brick. you God, know thank all you. those people if if sorry all those people if if they if sterling had come on for one oh, or yeah, two points my, you know, myself and Jason with Aguero captain last week would have been. You can't hear Nymphrea talk. Can you? <laughs> Brick God can't hear you talk. Nymphrea. He can't can... hear me because you got because you got your mic muted. You got your mic muted in Discord. Oh, okay. How do I unmute it? I can <laughs> hear on the laptop as well. Oh, you can. Hear... Yeah, if you just unmute your mic in Discord, and then can you actually hear Brick God when he speaks? No, uh, but then again, if you go it's, into not, the... it's not actually letting me. Unmute if you go anything. to user settings. If you go to user settings, user which settings. is to the right of yep. you, yeah, and then you can sort out your audio, uh, voice and video, voice ah, and video okay. settings there. They can sort out your, uh, your input and your output input. devices. Yeah, um, but but Brick, Brick, Brick God is about essentially just uh, Nymphria. Did you hear what she said in the stream? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I heard what she, okay. I, I heard what she said. In the there we I go, know. there we go. Awesome. Well, Brick God, thank you for coming on, and um, I hope you um make the right choice in the captaincy. I would go. I'll take a risk and go with Abraham. Thanks for that, mate. Cheers, dude. Good luck. Um, Cheers. Cheers, Brick God. Um, so we wait. Just wait for Nymphrea to to. to yeah, to, no, to... it's not. It's not actually giving me my devices. Um, Ooh. at the minute, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh. No, we, uh, while, while we're waiting around for that, let's yeah. bring in Chicken Tikka Mo Salah, a.k.a. <laughs> Charlie. Evening. Good evening, evening Charlie. Charlie. How well, you doing? Talking of Captain Dion Abraham, you are somebody that is going for it. Yeah, I am, but it's just so hard at the moment, like everyone's been saying. I think it's such a tough week, especially like when I got Aguero, KDB, Salah, Abraham. Yeah, it's tough. But yeah, I got it on Abraham at the moment. And why have you gone with Abraham? Um, well, I just think at the, at the moment it's just well, it's a really good fixture. Brighton, I know, I know that they're, they're not as you know as bad as some of the other teams. Like even though they've been playing with the wing back formation, like even against Man City, like they had chances. So, um, but yeah, I just think um, Abraham at the moment, but it's literally. Uh, so tough. Like, I'm not. I'm not sure yet. It'll probably go down to the wire again. <laughs> Do you think a lot of people, when they look at captaincy picks, they look at the value of the player and they kind of subconsciously think that player is only worth that amount of money. I'm not going <laughs> to captain him. Like, I I seriously think that's part of the psyche. They think, right? Yeah. I don't want to captain a nine point. I don't want to captain a seven million player or a seven point one million player. I I want to captain a twelve million player. It, it somehow that value is sort of indicative of the point returns it's like it's like the whole sterling aguero salah you know those sort of price points there um i just is that something that well obviously it's not something that affects you because you've gone with the abraham pick um 
but certainly I think in my head subconsciously I just think like for example if Dan James went on a high <coughs> a, a crazy scoring run I could never captain him because he's he's 6.1 yeah so, you know um and I think I think yeah I think that people in chat would probably uh yeah they are they're agreeing with me um yeah I yeah, I it's, don't it's, think it's brave to go with Abraham, but I've just said to, to Brick God, I think it's a great captaincy pick, and if you're thinking, and if you've got it on him, then it's, I think it's, I think it's worth a shot, definitely, home to Brighton. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, what he he's got, he got that hat trick against Wolves. Um, okay. Obviously, he got the double against I've, Norwich as well. I've changed the, and, the preferences, you know, like, but I like still can't that, hear anybody. Um, <laughs> what game was it they had? Uh, uh, the Liverpool game last week. Um, I'm greyed out he, in he the on air been... bit, if that makes any difference. They're creating a lot of chances, and I think, you know, he's. Come back in? He's done really well. How do I do that? To the waiting room? Sorry, sorry, Chicken. We're trying, <laughs> we're trying to sort them free out on Discord at the same time. Um, if you go back into the waiting room, I'll, I'll, I'll give you. There I am. Okay. There we go. Right, let's see if I can give you these. Uh, you've got everything you need. <laughs> you've got everything you need to talk. Um, let's try again. Can you hear us now, Nim? Yes, now I hear you. Okay, uh, just, there we go. So can you hear Charlie? Hello? Hey, can you hear me? yeah. All right. <laughs> there we go. Can you hear Nim? Yeah, I can hear Yay, you. Yay, we fixed hey. it. We fixed it live on air. There we go, guys. Um, um, no, Gotta but love a bit of technology. If you just, <laughs> just right-click Steve-O and my, my name and you don't hear an echo, then we just turn us down because you hear us through Skype. Um, yeah. There we go. Right, so what do you think, Nim, of Tammy, uh, Charlie's Tammy Abraham captaincy pick? Nice. Well, I hope it works out for you because obviously I got him in this week. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. So, Fingers yeah, I, I am hoping it goes well. It's a, it is a bit risky, but I think there are a lot of people taking that risk on Tammy this, this week, if I'm honest. I don't think he'll be as risky as a lot of people are thinking he would be, if that makes yeah. sense. <laughs> yeah, so. definitely. Because yeah, as well, I've had him, I got him in just before the Norwich game. So, you know, He's he's already uh, uh, provided me what five goals in three games. So nice. I mean, yeah, I can't see why not. He can't score one or two, you know, when he's got the likes of Mason Mount and you know a lot of good players uh, providing the assists and all the crosses in the box. Yeah, I, I I think it's a solid captaincy pick, and it's one that can really pay off for you, especially if the likes of Aguero, Sterling, Salah, you know. Um, these players don't return. I mean, even the likes of um, Aubameyang United. I mean, he could he could pretty much blank. I mean, if De Gea has a masterclass. So yeah, I mean, it's it's a tempting captaincy pick, and I'm even considering it myself. But whether or not I've got the minerals to do it is another thing. Yeah, I just hope I just hope uh, Sterling don't go mad because he was one of the transfers oh. I took out this week. You're not the only one that hopes mm. that. You, yeah, I'm uh, kind of hoping he does. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I think Sorry. I think Son Son as well is another one that's going to be I think ca captain by quite a lot of people. Um, let me just bring your team up on screen um, so that people okay. can see it. Um, yeah, it's 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 pretty much set, isn't it? Now, um, yeah. I like I like I like that. <laughs> I, I, the only thing I will say is, why are you ben benching Dan James at home to Arsenal and playing Campwell away at Crystal Palace, as you know, doubling up on Norwich? I'm really interested to know. Are you just washing your I hands think... of Man United assets completely? No, I just, I just don't think uh, United will score because you know they've been shocking against West Ham. They were shocking. Sorry, you know they're playing Arsenal, right? I mean, I... yeah, yeah, I know, I know, that, yeah, I know they got uh, Arsenal, but I just. I just think United. I know, obviously, Arsenal's defense is horrific, but you know, even even with like Greenwood and you know they got Lingard. I mean, yeah, their team's shocking. I mean, uh, if, yeah, yeah, I can't really yeah, argue with that. I just can't that. see it. I can't see it. No, I think we'll score. I just don't think we'll win. <laughs> and I think that Dan That's James and I Greenwood. Feel. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think Dan James and Greenwood will be in, in amongst the action. I really do. Um, and I certainly, I think when Steve-O's saying that Ollie wouldn't start Greenwood, I think that that would be a massive mistake. And I think that'd be something that you can't afford to do at the moment. 
But yeah, yeah. they they kind of have to start him, don't they? Because Brashford's yeah. injured and they yeah. don't have any other yeah. strikers. Um, and uh, and uh, what was it that uh, Boone and everyone says? It's um, Lingard's still improving. You know, he's, he's still yeah. he's still getting better. He's isn't still he? young. He's still, still young, young isn't he? um, even though he's only nearly thirty. Yeah, he's doing he's doing his fashion. He's got his fashion company. It's all right. Um, but no, in all in all seriousness, I would be playing Dan James over Cantwell personally. That home fixture against Arsenal, I think that if there's any team that has got a, the leakiest defence, the gaps that can open up, Dan James is all about pace, getting in behind. Honestly, mate, I can see it. I can see him scoring. I don't. I mean, whatever you do is obviously your decision, but I just think that I'd be, I'd be wanting to play Dan James in that game. Yeah, I mean, it depends. Depends who they play at right back, because uh, I know Bellerin played uh, the game the other night, and obviously Maitland Niles is uh, suspended. Mm. And no, so, he's, he's um, back for this. Well, he's he's free to be selected for this match. Oh, is he? Yeah. Um, I think he got. It overturned from two match and then played his match, uh, like his match ban was as part of the midweek, I think, something like that. Oh, right. Um, well, that that could yeah. possibly be better then because Maitland Niles well, ain't yeah. good at defense, <laughs> uh, you know, very good defensively. So James could possibly be in. I'll just have to wait and see yet and make a decision probably last minute like I did last week. Go with James. <laughs> Go with James. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, uh, Charlie, for coming on. Any got any final, um, f- any f- final to say before we we get the next caller on? Uh just thanks for having me on and keep up the good work, and you too, uh, Nymphria. Oh, thank you. Next, no cheers, cheers, Charlie. Yeah. Cheers, Nymphria. Can I ask you about the psychology of playing fantasy football? And we've got a lot of people in chat basically saying that why aren't people even discussing Salah? And I genuinely think it's because he's playing at 12.30 on Saturday. <laughs> Does that play into your mindset, times of games, when it comes to captaincy decisions? Yeah, it it does. Uh, I think I, I, I'm not a fan of the early the early captaincy, I have to say. Um, and, and I think there'd be a fair few with me on that. But um, actually, I think it's just more so that we haven't seen a ruthless performance from Salah yet this season. You know, mm. he, he hasn't really gone massive. We have seen Mane do that. You know, he scored two goals in one match, but we haven't really seen Mane go absolutely nuts. Uh, sorry, Salah go absolutely nuts yet this season. And I think it's that that's kind of holding me back and edging me more towards the City players just because we have seen them haul so often. And it's probably more so that in this particular case. But um, but yeah, there has definitely been times in the past where I've gone, I really don't want my captain in the first match. Mm. Then I'm going to have to go the whole game week knowing that my captain's blanked or he's only got one goal and I'm waiting for everyone else to... Yeah, it's not great, really. Um, it, 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 I think it does spoil the enjoyment a little bit, if I'm honest. <laughs> <'Cause>, you know, <laughs> unless your captain goes absolutely nuts in mm. that early match. You, you, you're always kind of then hope like waiting for the rest of the games. The rest but then of the it's weekend. also the, the it's also the the other side the other way as well. Flip of the you know the other side is where like say Salah does get a hat trick or something, then you're under pressure then knowing that your captain's yet to play. Yeah. Thinking, yeah. oh my god, please please return <laughs> because of the ownership of of the Salas the, the Manes, but. I mean, I've got Mane in my team, and I haven't even thought about him as as captain. But I mean, that's a great fixture, Sheffield yeah. away, and I'm thinking, you know what? Is it a great fixture? I yeah. think so. Sheffield United. I think home, so. I mean, I... I think so. Yeah, then it should be a lot. I think it's a lot harder than it initially looks. If I'm honest, it's but, a, well, it's yeah. compact. I mean, it's compact um, ground, and I think that. <sighs> I just don't know. It's Liverpool. I think they're on a the high at the moment. And they're running. They're on a bit of a mission to win the Premier League, aren't they? I just, I don't no, know. absolutely. I don't should, know. Should we, should we bring on? Should we bring on regular contributor Vince Chapman, one of our rivals in the Cashmere League? Absolutely, Vince Chapman. You're live on air, game week seven preview with Nymphria. Um, I've said that Manchester United are going to lose to Arsenal. Nymphria said that Arsenal are going to lose to Manchester United. <laughs> as a, as a fellow no, United, well, as, as a fellow United fan, clowns. as a fellow United fan, am I mad? Or, or am I? Are you in agreement with me? I think we are going to lose. No, I was saying in chat before that I think, as fans from both respective teams, we've both lost the passion and the fight for it. 
yeah. and we're just FPLers now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was actually saying something similar my, myself um, on Twitter a few weeks ago. People were, um, you know, saying about our um, draw that um oh you know they're angry in this and that and the other and why aren't you angry you know that that it, it's been thrown away and there was a lot of us arsenal fans going because we just can't be bothered to be angry anymore we've done all of that <laughs> you know we've yeah, done the angry yeah. we've done the disappointment we've we've done it all now we've literally been through every motion and we just just think oh well there you go you know and that's how it kind of feels now you know so i completely agree there yeah, totally. Fans are going to the game and they're coming out dejected or going in dejected, depending on what the team news is. I mean, yeah. You yeah. Can't, we can't trust the manager. We know both clubs have problems higher above. And both teams are a bunch of clowns, as Steve says. <laughs> mm. Yeah. 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 What's your, what's your, what's your thoughts on the score? The what's it's your... literally a day at the circus. On yeah. Monday. What do you think the score's going to be, Vince? As you said, so I agree with you, we'll score and we won't win and it will be one. We won't score more than one goal. No, it will be one one. Uh, one uh, one, okay. Wow. Yeah. Going, yeah. Okay. Um yeah, so another point Monday. Vince, you've posted your team I I would imagine. No, old technology, so um, uh, either you have to find it in the oh, Ray My team or I've only made one. Yeah, I know. I've only made one change. I've brought Is in, it sixty uh, sixty four Jason in the Cash Mini League? I've brought in I brought in Aurier for someone. Nice. But again, I, I don't assume Tottenham are going to keep a clean sheet. I don't like Tottenham for clean sheets. I think Aurier, your point's going to be a kind of Trent style, you know, attacking like threat more so than from his clean sheets, if I'm honest. I, I just, yeah, <laughs> not a big fan of Spurs defence. So, Vince, you've got. Um... I mean, you've got a similar sort of team to yeah. me, really. What do you mean similar sort of team as you? <laughs> You've got my team, mate. Mate, no, mate I don't count with you. Use minus 60s to get my team. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, obviously you've got Salo instead of Mane. Um, you've got Otamendi in there as well. You've got the dilemma between Aguero um, or not Aguero. Obviously you've got Son. Abraham as great captain. What do you mean, captain. not Aguero, not Aguero? What's this stuff? Well, the, the whole, the got getting rid of Sterling now. Um, do you, are you confident with your captain pick? Have you, are you have you decided who you're going to captain for game week seven? Yeah, it's been on Tammy all week. Um, they're probably really chilled. Everyone else oh, is stressed okay. out. Okay. So, this so... is the most chilled I've been all season. Oh, wow. Okay. Another, another Tammy Abraham captain. Awesome. Um, yeah. So, 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 literally, talk me through your um, thought process of having Tammy Abraham um, at Brighton uh, as opposed to having uh, one of the Man City assets you've got or Salah. Who? I, uh, I can't see the the top two, so Liverpool and uh, City scoring highly. So I'm not interested in them this week. But for me, it's between uh, Abraham and uh, Tottenham assets, whichever one you have. Most people don't have Kane, so it's Abraham or Son for me. Mm. And uh, then Son came on for 20 minutes, and I was like, okay, definitely Abraham. Okay, okay then. So, wow, another another Tammy Abraham captain. And it's uh, surprising. Um, I would have thought I'd have seen more um, Spurs. You'll get two or three goals this weekend, and I'll go ahead of you in the cash lead chase. Oh, well, <laughs> sounds... All right, well, sounds like a uh, fighting talk, Vince. I like it. I'm like really see... hoping yeah, yeah. Tammy lives up to all this hype now because I'm getting a tiny <laughs> bit get... concerned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, that with this season, everyone's pretty much had captaincy fails. So where's the stress coming from? You could fail again or just pick one. It's no problem. Oh, there we go. If we all, we all, I wish or, I, or I, I wish I had that mindset. Keep it on Aguero like I have done. <laughs> I think for me, I, I, I can't see. I gotta go Aguero again. Um, it's just, I think it's the stubbornness after wild carding for him. I think it's just like the the residue of that um that wild card team. But um, I applaud you for going with Abraham. I really do, and I hope he yeah. serves you well. Thank you, Vince. And I'll be looking at you back through the wing mirrors of my car as I always do. Uh, yeah yeah I look forward to it I look forward to um the, your Tammy Abraham pick paying off but it could even be one of those game weeks couldn't it that Aguero and Abraham get similar points but thank you ever so much for no us. no cheers <laughs> mate see, see you now see you now see you Sunday 
Um, we've got the uh, who's that? Is that Anarag? He's changed his name again. Asparagus. We're bringing asparagus in to the, onto the show. Asparagus. <laughs> That's, uh, Great, no. You're live on air. It's game week seven. We've got an infria with us. Um, is this your first time on the show? Because it's the first time I've seen your name. Yeah, it's my first time, and uh, it's the first time I'm actually talking on Discord with you guys. Wow, welcome to the show. And um, how thank long? You, thank you. How long have you, if you don't mind me asking, how long have you been a part of the uh, the community? Uh, so I started following you guys right uh, around the preseason time. Oh wow! And watching the shows regularly, but today I decided I would come on the air. Excellent. Well, we've got a special guest with us. We've got Nimfria here. Have you got a question? Hey have you got a question for for Nim? Uh, well. I'm here today mainly uh, because I'm on a wild card, so I really Ooh. wanted to uh, get your opinions. So I'll actually post the team. Yeah, could you post me what you've got so far yeah. on your wild cards? Yeah, right? sure thing. In, in the team screenshots. That's wow. So what made you wild card? Uh, so I have my own mini league with my friends, and uh, I started quite okay, but then I fell behind quite badly, mostly due to bad captaincy picks. Uh, last week when Sterling, who, who was my captain, got benched, I thought, this is it. I'm going to wild card. Just try to get catch up with everyone else. No. So essentially, I'm Here's... looking at the team here on my screen, and yeah. that is quite literally the team that I had on my end. That I was just exactly. doing a, a, a actually... mock-up wild card. But I didn't yeah. have Sayunchu. I had Tamuri of... Chelsea and I had Otamendi in my team. I also was going with Trent Alexander yeah. Arnold, but I was I was three million out of having this team basically. And but I I this team asparagus wow. is stunning. That that that, stunning. that is wow. Um, Steve, I was on a train uh, coming back home from a really long day, and I just uh, opened. I saw that you guys are live on the air. Mm. And I just started watching the stream, and by that point I had already wildcarded. <laughs> and when you were playing around with the with the team and uh, coming up with that draft, I was just laughing because it was exactly the team I was thinking <laughs> for going for. It's stunning. Yeah, I I, I echo what Steve is saying. I mean, the Alexander Arnold's pretty much a, a no brainer, really, in defense. Uh, you can saying... afford to, you can afford to downgrade the likes of Zinchenko now. Is you know, it's kind of been pushed out as an FPL option we've got um yeah. you know the I think the Soyunku fixture is going to be getting better we've got um like the picture you brought in we've got Rico as a budget option potentially at the moment uh as Daniels is injured um he's, he's he's doing all right at the moment he's getting the odd return <laughs> and um you know Diop's not going to change the world but Lundstrom's there as well I mean there's great budget picks really and I think sure, that's yeah. I think the midfield and uh, the attack is just sublime. Salah, De Bruyne, Son, yeah. Aguero. I'm going big with that midfield yeah. and attack, and I'm hoping it will pay off. Actually, my uh, well, the thing I wanted to get your guys' opinion on is about that Diop spot because I'm really considering going between him or Tomori. Chelsea's fixtures are just stunning, and I would uh, I wouldn't mind having Diop uh, to to Tomori. Or Tomori. Well, I'm on a wild card, so yeah. I can just uh, switch between the two, both the same well, price. Well, Nin, Nin Free will probably agree with me. West Ham have got, from a clean sheet perspective, um, the better opportunities to get clean sheets. At the end of the day, Chelsea right. just like to attack, attack, attack. Their yeah. defence is just a waste of space. Uh, Nim, your thoughts on essentially Chelsea versus West Ham defence? Yeah, I think you you're kind of banking on um, previous game weeks if you're going West Ham, so you already know what you're getting with them. Uh, with Chelsea, you're banking on the hope of fixtures and what they can achieve if it goes well. I think given your wild carding and the fact that you've you've got some decent cover there, you know, on your bench and things like that, and you you've got um, a, a a couple of, I've got your team here in front of me. So you've got a couple of really good options there if if one of Tamori or Duke doesn't work out for you. So I think you could think of that spot as a bit of a punt spot if you like. And nice. just if you wanted to try Tamori for a couple of weeks and just see if Chelsea do tighten up at the back, then you could do. Um, but obviously then the option 
you know, should be able to, you know, there to be able to go back to West Ham. I've got to ask a question. Um, obviously, myself, Nim, um, a lot of others have gone on to the Aguero bus now. We're, yeah. we're confident with Aguero instead, instead of Sterling. Obviously, you're in a yeah. you're in a wild card position. Are you... It was only a matter of weeks ago that people were completely dismissing Aguero and saying Sterling is is their choice for the season and are they're not going to change it <laughs> and are, are, are you kind of now you're in a wild card situation are you confident that aguero with obviously jesus being back to fitness again do you see aguero being the main man at city playing the majority of the minutes uh in the premier league not too worried about europe and you can afford to get rid of you know to go to go sterling list essentially well, I had Sterling on my uh, original team before World Carding, and uh, uh, as a matter of fact, I'm a Manchester City supporter myself. And the reason I went originally with Sterling uh, was because that uh, Leroy Sané injury, and he was—I thought he's basically the only one who can play on that left wing. So I thought his pr- his place is pretty much nailed on. <laughs> Where for Aguero, I was really uh, worried that this might be the year that uh, Jesus starts. And Aguero is slowly taken out of the team. His first six games right now. Uh, I think Aguero is at the moment more nailed down, especially with the performance Bernardo and Mahrez put on on the last game. I'm sure Sterling will start next game, or I'm quite sure that he will start. Mm. I just can't see uh, are you worried? Uh, so essentially, Aguero going out. Essentially, the question is, you're, you're more worried about not owning Aguero than, than not owning Sterling then. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And, uh... Okay. Interesting. It's just I interesting think... how thought processes change, isn't it? Over mm. a very short period yeah, of time. Uh, but as, as we I... know more information, of course. Yeah, that's completely true. Yeah, what, what's funny is that actually that team is very similar to what my pre-season team was. The whole mm. lead up to to FPL actually starting so I had Aguero KDB because I've always been a like a premium striker kind of person and then I had Wilson I think and then maybe Greenwood I think but um but other than that everything else was pretty you know pretty similar Mm. and um yeah I I dropped uh Aguero when the when he um didn't play in the cup (laughs) (laughs) And I got Kane in for the first game week. So it actually worked out okay for the first game week. But obviously in dropping Aguero, I switched to Sterling um, with the extra funds instead of just keeping De Bruyne where he was and keeping the money in the bank to switch Kane back to Aguero where I would pretty much have this team without having to have needed to wild card. So it's, yeah. it is funny how it how how the season and how pre-season changed you because that was you know a, a very similar team to mine like for a good four weeks. <laughs> <laughs> well i mean it's it, yeah it's the thought process that go i mean as as a lot of content creators i've heard it's the information that you get in and as we know more you know i think that team there is is pretty much the the best you can do on a wild card um i don't know where I, as always as i always say when you're yeah. creating an fbl team you want players that are key to that specific team, Abraham, their striker, Puki is their striker, Aguero is. What I mean is, is they're they're the guaranteed strikers for their particular teams. Mm-hmm. Everything yeah. goes through Salah, everything goes through De Bruyne, everything goes through Cantwell, Son, out of position striker, defence. They're all useless. Any defenders well, out there? Taa is. I I think Taa is a beast. Yeah. Or yes. Robertson, you know, oh, he, yeah. he does well, do it. I'm not a fan well. of Robertson. Yeah. I think he, I think he overperformed last year, but you watch him prove me wrong. But no, I think yeah. TAA. I think TAA is is the one out of the two. But um, the, yes. the only thing I would say, asparagus, is just that you do have two four four point somethings in midfield. Is that right? Yeah. Well, basically, yeah. I'm planning on playing a three four three okay. uh, with uh, Trent and Suyunku being the uh, nailed on ones, and then uh, rotating between Diop and Lundstrom, and in really desperate times, bringing Rico in. Yeah. See. Okay. Uh, not playing any of those front three, so that basically leaves the five midfield option out for me. Mm-hmm. And I just okay. brought Nakamba in because he has been starting the last two games, and uh, 
he's basically there just in case another Sterling like last week happens. I get last week mm. I got zero points from Dan Donker coming off the bench. So mm. yeah, yeah as, as long as he's starting, because obviously we know that Cantwell's form at home has been a little bit dodgy. So um, to have him kind of as your permanent four, he's. He kind of, um, at FPL Monkey said something about this the other day. He was kind of saying that Cantwell is kind of n- not quite brilliant enough to be your fourth midfielder, but too good to be your fifth <laughs> midfielder. So he kind of falls in that kind of, yeah. I mean, and Asperger's... there are good game weeks, yeah. No, sorry, carry on. Game weeks where I can play Suyonku, Alexander Arnold, Diop, and Lundstrom, I would be more than happy to play a 4 3 3 with Cantwell on the bench. Mm. Uh, calling you from Finland, so I mm. will not bench Puki ever. <laughs> he will stay in this team forever, but and I will start him every week. But Cantwell, I can see dropping him. Wow, it's a great play. He's a great player from Finland. Represents his new country really well, and <laughs> long may long may he keep getting those goals. Yeah. Um, Indeed. <laughs> thank you, Finland. Uh, thank, thank you, yeah. <laughs> thank you, Asparagus, for coming on our show for the first time. It would, it would be a pleasure to have you on again. Absolutely. Thank you so much for the great content and, and, that you guys are putting up, and yeah, just keep going, doing great. And um, if you if you are free on Sunday to come on for our Sunday surgery um, stream and, and let us know how your wildcard team goes, buddy. Uh, we'll uh, we'll be more, than, be more happy than happy to. Cheers, happy to cheers, happy. cheers. Now you take care, buddy. Thank you so much. Have a good night, guys. That's, cheers, that's amazing. Bro. Let's get let's get on. G Wiz. G Wiz. G Wiz, can you mute the stream, buddy? <laughs> I think he's coming now. Here we go. G Wiz, you there? <laughs> he's, I bet he's AFK. G Wiz, you there? Of course I'm here. Oh, here he is. Hey, G Wiz, you're live. You're live on air. Game week seven preview show. We've got Nymphrea here. Um, I said United are going to lose to 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 Arsenal. Nymphrea saying that Arsenal's going to win, uh, lose to Man United. What do you think as a West Ham fan? Honestly, I've predicted a one-one draw. Oh, another one-one. There we go. So, um, welcome to the show, Mr. Wiz, and. Um, You've got to be a bit of an unhappy West Ham fan, haven't you? After that midweek shambles. Why? <laughs> I didn't go to the game. I didn't pay any money. So why, <laughs> why would I be unhappy? I can't really talk. Can I be any United supporter? But no, um, are you set for game week seven? Yes, I am. I can't wait. I wish it started right now, tomorrow. We <laughs> need it now. Come on. Where is it? <laughs> okay. Have you got? Um, could you po- possibly post your team in the, um, the, the team screenshots? Is that all right? Or... No. Could be a no, Jason. Oh, I've got to find it, have I? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not here to. No, no, no. I don't want. Really, I don't even want to talk about my team. No, no. no. Don't want to talk oh, about he, it. He's time. keeping it on the down low. Keeping it on the down low. You right. tell them, Nim. You tell them. I can't yeah. be giving away my. He's my, got my mini plans leagues today. to win. Mini right. leagues. Wiz, exactly. Wiz, if you're not here to talk about your mini, if you're not here to talk about your team, what are you here to talk about then? Okay, okay. <laughs> I was here to. I was here to talk about the um, psychology that you was going on about. With captains oh, yes. and yes. when they play. Ah, uh, yes, absolutely. Because for me, if I pick a captain, I've picked him because I reckon he's going to be the highest scoring player of that week in my team. I haven't picked him because oh he's going to play at five thirty this weekend or oh <laughs> his match ain't until Monday. No, I'm picking my captain because that's the best captain pick for my team. I don't <laughs> give a monkey's when he plays. It sounds so simple, but I know that there's a lot of people out there with that have dilemmas more, more, more dem- more dilemmas than that, and even even the psychology of of not just the time dif- the times that the the, play- the teams play, but also the prices. I mean, we've had two people come on this evening that are going with Tammy Abraham because they think that he's going to do the he's going to be the best option in their team, and I applaud them for it. But I know a lot of people that wouldn't even consider Tammy Abraham because he's only seven point was he seven point one seven point two. Well, more fool them. That's all I can say. That was G Wizzle on the Abraham. I I can't reveal my sources to this week. I'm sorry. I'd love to help you out there, love, but no. I'm just saying. I'm just saying that uh, from what I can see, that fixture Chelsea Brighton is the easiest fixture on that list you got there. It's the easiest fixture. So if you want to go with Mount, if you want to go with Abraham, if you want to go with whoever, then go with it. 
Chaban saying that Abraham is 7.5. It can't be 7.5. Surely not. Yeah, he's 7.5. Yeah, yeah. Is he really? 7.5. Yeah, wow. he's 7.5. Okay. What what price did you think he was? I was like, I thought 7.2. I, I, I genuinely... Couldn't remember. Well, wow, oh, there you oh, go. Do keep up with the, oh, keep up, Jace. Come on, mate. <laughs> Worst thing is, I got him in on last weekend. Um, no, but in all seriousness, I, I think that what you say is a breath of fresh air in terms of the captaincy, you know, decision. I think that so many people get caught up on. I mean, Nim was talking about the ownership going with the crowd. I think sometimes you can. You look at the fixtures and you think, right. That fixture stands out. In this case, it is the Chelsea Brighton game. You know, conf- be confident in the player that you put the armband on. And like I was confident with Aguero um, away at Norwich with that makeshift Norwich team, and I honestly thought he was going to do. The- and that's why I don't regret. I don't regret it because. I was confident and it was my choice and it was not... You, you know... make it sound like he didn't do anything, Jason. <laughs> you genuinely do. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. Whoever... You did the right thing, in my opinion, mm-hmm. by playing a triple captain on Aguero and you was unlucky that he only got a goal and an assist. I Me, mean, do you see the highlights? I mean, he could have got five games. He could have got five goals, sorry. Easily that game. Mm-hmm. Me, as a non-owner, oh, oh my God, I got away with murder that, that week. Mm. Well, it was all about KDB, wasn't it? And the, I mean, I saw screenshots. I mean, Steve-O posted as well on Twitter and it was like the people that triple captain Sterling for that game. Oh, and who did they have vice captain? Oh. It was, Let uh, me guess, KDB. Yeah, yeah. I oh, mean, man. absolutely amazing. Absolutely nailed it. They unintentionally nailed it, but they nailed it. Imagine if Sterling <laughs> came off the bench for the last 10 minutes and got one. That would have been amazing. Oh, don't, don't. Because I, I, had, I had Sterling as my captain and I, I had De Bruyne as vice captain. Mm. No. And I was just praying that he was not even going to make a little two-second cameo. <laughs> well, yeah, you. I mean, it's one of those, isn't it? Well, a lot of people benefit from it. Have you got a question for Nim Freer while you're here? Um, yes, Nim. What rank are you at the moment? I am around 217,000 at the minute. Overall points? Um... I had my thing up a minute ago. Uh, 300 and... 69. So 65 with with the four points just taken off that I've just spent, which is about 290k, I believe. So should still be within that 300k at the the point taking that hit. Mm. So, have you taken any hits this season yet? I've taken two minus fours. So, I uh, took a minus four in the second week, I believe, mm-hmm. and then this week. So, yeah. Excellent. Wow. So, so who, who, who's your captain this week then, Nim? I'm on Aguero at the minute. Um, I have just brought Abraham in. And mm. I have been tempted, but I think there's that little bit of nervousness of, you know, just having bought in a player and all of that sort of thing. So I'm, I'm feeling a bit too nervous to go the whole hog and get in. <laughs> 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 so, yeah. Mr. Mr. Well, Wiz, I... Mr. Wiz, uh, any final thoughts before we, uh, we, we get on to the next step of the podcast i'll be, look, be looking forward to that next rosé gee whiz <laughs> oh yeah, yeah yeah but this time you have to buy me a drink yeah yeah we've, we've got sorted. to have a quality tea sorted. all right nice nice, Mate, nice yeah nice. you're on <laughs> <laughs> all right then i'll catch you later thank you wiz bye. thank you bye. so much bye. 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 Cheers, buddy. see you soon excellent we love having him on the show um <laughs> i'm mindful of the time um obviously we're getting up to the t- we're 10 past 10 um we've got a few minutes before we uh, have to end the show so i just want to Steve remind is about to turn back into a pumpkin so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's got his beauty sleep believe you me he's a plenty of it uh, we've got the um we've got this the, the admin steve you want to go go ahead and uh oh all right <laughs> i thought we were going to take one more caller for for 30 seconds just let's just bring on the, the, the let's bring on anorag and then we'll only for a few seconds and We'll, 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 we'll go for the admin. All right, and Anurag is now on air. He's got himself muted and deafened. Um, Anurag, are you there? He wasn't expecting us. He wasn't expecting us. <laughs> uh, 
there we go. Call, there we go. Call in Anorak. Call <laughs> in. <laughs> there we go, Stephen. Sorry. Hey. Oh, he's here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, I was unmuted. Right, anyway. Hello. The vengeful porcupine. Yep. That's the name. Isn't the vengeful amazing. porcupine. Yeah, anyway. That is my that is my UCL fantasy team name. Epic. Epic. Uh, F, not my FPL is as you already know. <laughs> so, so Anorak, captaining yep. uh, Salo. Yep. Why go? Why break something if it hasn't worked for me for the last six game weeks? Mm. But I had I had Sterling captain last time, and I had Salah vice captain. So technically, Salah became my captain. <laughs> so you left so out a bit. <laughs> so I'll just continue with my luck of at least one return in the last six game weeks. I really hope that continues, so that Salah keeps ticking <laughs> away for me. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. And I'm taking out Sterling. You're Ooh. taking out Sterling. Yeah, you, 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 you didn't, the last time I came on, I told that if he blanks the two games, which is the UCL game and then the next game, Watford game, which he didn't play, I would take him out. Who are you bringing in? Son? Sure. Uh, Mane. Mane? Nice. Okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And then I'm going to be going Hala to Wadi. Okay. What, what okay. I, well, next week you mean? Like this week, oh, I have two free transfers. Oh yeah, free, okay. Vardy, okay, could be good, could be good. Um, I said one nil in that game, but um, with with that that midfield, I, said, what I think. What did I say? I don't know. What Let me said. see my predictions. What did you say? I said. What did I say? Three zero. I like the moves. I think. I, I think. Um, getting getting Haller at your team is is um pretty much. Essential, really. I think. Yeah. I think that's. So uh, now that I have ship's, to think about wild that ship's card. sailed, I think. Potentially, because I'm planning on either wild carding and doing the international break or the third international break. I haven't decided when. Well, well those are my. I'm deciding. I'm. It depends on my game week seven, game week eight performance, but either wild carding between game week eight to game week nine or game week twelve or game week thirteen. Well. Cool. Yeah, I think that um, I think that Wan Bissaka at home to Arsenal is, gonna, is standing out to me as being a, a, a zero pointer and potentially Lundstrom. I don't know. I'm going to have two Liverpool players against Lundstrom. <laughs> well, I don't really have anybody in the pen. Well, unless I want to take a hit and take out Digne, but I could take a hit to take out. I don't know if I want. Uh, I could take a hit to take out Digne or AWB if I want to. Should I? I don't know. That's just no, for take, one. I, I think, uh, having a hit to take out KDB is, just, is mental. No, no, not KDB. No, I was thinking Dinya. because oh, I have yeah. Oh, since sorry. I have, I'm gonna have Mane and Salah against Ludstrom. Um, I can take out either Digne or AWB for like Tomori, so that I could have a better back four. Mm. But that's like only for this game. Yeah. I, think I mean, not... if you're only doing a minus four for this game, Mick, I'd probably leave off if I was you. Because, mm. I mean, it's it's you're only going to gain two points if that player gets a clean sheet from your minus mm. four. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't think it's worth it. If you're if, if you're keeping him long term, then it's different. But just for one game, Mick, probably. Yeah, probably because stick. people are going to be wanting to stick with Dinya going forward. Um, but yeah, because yeah, wanna... I sold him now, so he's going to be brilliant. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, I see. I see this picture. Well, happened to my two players that I took out, Son and Kane. They both scored. Oh, Sterling no. and Heller both blank. <laughs> oh. I see that there's a picture I've just put on the screen. It's like every time I, uh, I hear you on the on this court, it's what I think when when I see it. But um, no, I think your team's. I think your team's all right. I mean, you don't need to yeah. Um, go crazy. So it's not a wild card just... team in like two week game weeks, right? Well, that's my plan. I was gonna wild card in like two weeks. I would do it with international break. I would probably. Mm. Next international break or the third one? Next one. Oh, that depends on performances. Next one. Absolutely. Yeah, it depends on performances, but I I probably do it then. Thank you, Anarag, for coming on. Have you got a question yep. for Nymphria, yeah. by the way, before you go? Ah, uh, not really. Just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Well, thank you ever so much for coming on. Thank yep. you. Cheers, dude. <laughs> Absolutely. 
there we have it. There's the uh, final corner of the evening, everybody, and uh, we can only thank. Well, you Dan Ball's here. Do you, do you want to get him on? Really? Oh, I have respect for Dan. Yeah. All yeah, right, Dan Ball. Seconds. Dan Ball, you're the last call of the evening. Game week seven preview with a special guest, Nim Freer. How are you doing? I'm good, mate. Yourself? I'm super. Thanks for asking. Um, are you set for game week seven? Uh, not really. Um, I don't know. I'm thinking <sighs> Zinchenko. What to do with Zinchenko? That's my problem at the moment. That's my headache. Right, that's I'm good. quite happy with my midfield and my attack. Um, oh, got I don't a, know. I mean, I've got a free got... transfer. Yeah, I've got obviously got one free transfer. I was tempted to actually leave it this week. Otto Mendy, then, isn't see it? if Zinchenko. Well, I haven't got any money, I haven't got any money in the bank, but um, I was tempted to leave, my, save my transfer and then have like two free transfers for the following game week. But mm. um, I'm not sure. I'm a bit worried about Pookie as well. Why, why, why are you worried about... My team too late. You think... Oh, right. You think you, away at Crystal Palace, you're worried about him um, not getting any returns there? Yeah, is it's like his away form's not been brilliant, and mm. I think, yeah, Palace that could be a quite a tight game to be fair. Norwich Palace. What? Um, yeah, it could be. Um, I can see I see your point of view, but I just want to and a few people in chat. I mean, I was looking at Greenwood as third on your bench. What? Should, why? why? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've got my mate Lindstrom though. Saved my game week last time round, but yeah, I could. I, it's a, I, so let's just let's say, well let's say Zinchenko doesn't play. Um, I know we didn't play in the League Cup game during midweek, and then obviously Kelly didn't play against Wolves last game week. Lundstrom obviously at home to Liverpool. Like, you know, I'm not expecting too much from that. That's that's my little thought process in my head. So yeah, obviously I need to get Greenwood. I suppose in theory I could play Greenwood instead of. Campwell? Maybe Campwell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because Campwell didn't that's really do I, a that's lot. That's what I said Burnley, to Steve. Right? I, that's what I said to Steve. I think I'll be playing Greenwood instead of Campwell. I think having two Norwich is a bit. I don't know. I think the, 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 I I yeah. I have that worry that um, that Norwich will struggle to score away at Palace. Um, as and and I think I'll be more confident having just Puky than having both Campwell and Puky. Um, in that game mm. and having Greenwood starting for me because I think I, I don't know if you heard me but I said that Arsenal were going to win 2-1 um, at, <laughs> yeah. at, at Old Trafford but I did I think that we could score I can't believe you said that Jay you, you've forgotten about our bet I'm a broken. About I'm, a, I'm a broken man, mate. I am, and 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 um, your fellow Arsenal fan, I'm hoping Nimfria, you're right. I'm really hoping you're right. Jace. Your your fellow Arsenal Nim fan, Nimfria, is saying that the other way around. She thinks that um, United will win win uh, two one. Um, so, what's your thoughts on that fixture? I just want to get your opinion. Um, I'm quite disappointed in Freya for saying that. Actually, I'm kind of, I'm kind of disappointed in you as well, Jay. Um, like you know, because we've got this what bet going on. This is what it brings it me. See, yeah. If I say we win, though, we, I'll curse them. So, like you know, this is my way of not cursing us. <laughs> it's the psychology behind it. Yeah. Like, I it knew is. we weren't going to win. Do, you're both doing the reverse psychology. Yeah. Now that game, I mean, <laughs> we've got, like I say, we've got a terrible record at Old Trafford. Mm -hmm. um, we do. I think Abamyang's uh, Abamyang Abamyang is a decent <laughs> captain pick, um, mm. but I just still think United will will score because of our defence mm. and it like it's an evening game at Old Trafford. Solskjaer's under pressure. I honestly think it will be a draw because I don't United can't afford to lose like back to back games after losing at West Ham. I mean, they, there was a good victory for for United against Rochdale. I thought that was sort of boost the morale a bit to beat Rochdale on penalties. But Dan, you're, so... taking the... I need a then. you're taking the mick there, aren't you? <laughs> uh, well, um, <laughs> into the next round. But um, no, I think it'll be it'll be a tight game. I, well, I say tight game. I reckon it'll be one all or two all. Okay. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so the captaincy, is it going to be on definitely on Sterling? Do you know what? I was thinking about this during the show and that. I'm tempted to captain De Bruyne. Because okay. he's, that man, he's that man on form at the moment. Yeah, he's a bit um, consistent at the minute, isn't he? 
Yeah, he's essential. So, I mean... Oh, I don't know. My captain choice is not, not thought, recently. Though. Not thought about Salah. Obviously, got the vice on him at the moment. Or even a Bamiang at Wayne United. Obviously, you know, I I think I said it would have to be a De Gea masterclass to keep a Bamiang out. Yeah, I mean, the Bamiang's... Yeah, he's got a good chance as well. I think it's funny you say about Salah, like the way he's been this season and that and being a bit greedy and that and stuff and not necessarily being amazing but Southampton's defense I mean last week against Bournemouth particularly that third goal was was terrible so this is a strong case for that and I think Sterling being dropped as well well not dropped rested sorry um at home to Watford he'll want to prove a point as well mm. because obviously Bernardo Silva stepping up mm. so much competition for like midfield I mean even City I looked at their lineup against Preston in the um, I think it was Preston they played in the cup and like I just looked at their midfield and I was like that's their like B team and you got like David Silva and you know Gundogan and stuff like that international players oh, it's, it's, just it's been... crazy isn't it they're, they're the second string team yeah, is just, just as mm-hmm. strong as their first um, <laughs> I I look at a team I mean it's just you got a double Burnley Oh no, you haven't. No, you haven't. Um, you got you got heat in. Sorry, I thought I, well, I, I thought ex- I thought it was I'm Pope. I thought it was Pope. I don't know why. I looked at that and I thought it was Pope. No, you've got um, Pope, sorry, you got Heaton at home to Burnley, and then you've got Loughton away at Aston Villa. So you're hoping for a nil nil there. Um, Dinya at home to Man City is a bit of a headache. Uh, Zinchenko's. Yeah. Oh, you got a few headaches in this team. You've got you got Zinchenko that's likely not to play um, or, or get much many minutes, and you, you know it's it's this. Um, you know, again, relying on your midfield really and your strikers to get you those, mm. those points. I, I, I think, and it's nice that you stuck with Aubameyang. Have you got any free transfers? Yeah, he's Mate, got I one. got one. You've I got, got a one. Like, I mean, one. I was thinking Zinchenko. I can't believe I'm so Boone is going to love me saying this. Oh, Zinchenko yeah. to Serge Aurier. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Five million. You know. As, yeah. as Son, I know you can't do it now, but has Son crossed your thoughts in the, the last few weeks? It's going to sound really romantic, me saying this, but Son's always on my mind. <laughs> 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 what we're doing for an Arsenal fan to say, but like, yeah. just, just because I bought him in last season um, and he did so well for me, I got him in sort of ahead of the, ahead of the pack, so to speak, and... I think Spurs are going to be really reliant on Son and Kane at the moment with the way they're playing. So, but I can't afford it. So the only thing I can do possibly is save a couple of transfers for the following game week and then maybe be able to fit him in somehow. But did you say that you've taken out Sterling? Yeah, I have, yeah. Wow. I've got yeah. Son in. But, um, but no, Dan, I mean, I think you're pretty much set. I mean, there's Zinchenko move. You could obviously go to Aurier. Um I think that's, that's... Yeah, just to just to kind of put the cat amongst the pigeons. Obviously, I had Dini and Zinchenko in defence at the start of the week, and I sold both of them. So, <laughs> um, wow. yeah. So I mean, yeah, I, I would be concerned about your defence, but you do have a, as the lads were saying, you do have a really strong kind of mid and forward line. So even if your defence doesn't do too well, which if Zinchenko doesn't play i think he might actually get a game week this week weirdly mm. i don't know why but i do think he might actually play this week um greenwood over do, Kentwell. yeah put, put greenwood you in. think greenwood's gonna score then i think he's yeah, gonna start because uh, i sold him he will and Dina will get you an assist <laughs> as well so you, you're set him, man. man you're set just get greenwood in there now and, and you can thank me you can thank me after the weekend <laughs> Excellent. That. Cheers, Dan, for coming on. All right. Cheers, guys. Take Bye, Dan. Bye. It's, um, Dan, uh, former co host and in charge of our uh, uh, Instagram. Um, Steve O, um, Nymphria, it's been an amazing podcast. Thank you ever so much. Um, do you want to do the admin? Steve O. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Just airing the views of Jason there. Thank you, thank you, Nymphria, for joining us. It's been an wow. absolute pleasure. And uh, thanks for having yeah, me. here's the boring. No, thank you, thank <laughs> you for joining us. Really, really appreciate it. So, yeah, as uh, Jason said, it's the boring bit. So, bye. No, I'm not going to play up on that. Um, so, yeah, it's um, 
what do I always say? It's if you want to support the show as ever, just simply hit that like button. If you are new around here, you've enjoyed the show and you enjoy the content that myself and Jason do produce, simply hit that subscribe button. If you want to follow us on Twitter to find out when we're going live on air next, by all means, just follow us on at Elite FPL. Jason just mentioned uh, we are on Instagram, but our former co-host, Dan, who you just heard live on air then, he's the one in charge of that. So by all means, follow us on Instagram at Elite FPL. Uh, Jason also has a website for the uh, for the show. It's <laughs> EliteFPL.com if you want to give that a visit, by all means. Other than that, I can't think of anything else. Other I can. Than join us on... I can. Check out FPL Nymphria on YouTube and also the <laughs> yeah. FPL Wildcats. Oh, yes. Um, they 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 stream weekly and well, I just don't know where Nymphria gets the time to do both. I, I salute you, <laughs> I salute you. So check them out, give I'm them a, a follow. I'm a very busy woman. <laughs> and uh, hit her up on uh, Twitter as well. She's very active oh, on there. Thank you. Um, but guys, thank you ever so much for being a part of the show tonight and for all the callers that have come on. You guys are awesome, and we look forward to game week seven and all the points it's going to bring. Take care. I, just just an interest where, whereabouts are you not not in the world but are you near like a an industrial um, machine or something it's uh-huh. very uh two seconds uh, just ask a couple of questions i just need to get the door for a yeah, second no so problem, this mate. is this is what happens when you're lying Dad, what's going on uh no, not really i'm waiting to go to gym what about yourself um live on youtube doing a stream why do you feel that you're constantly changing your teammate is it just, it's just, just so hearing many so, ideas? So many ideas, so many different perspectives. I br- I blame Brett Mollison for his five at back because when you see my new team. <laughs> wow. Brighton home, they couldn't buy a goal in the little last season. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know. Dan's got Dan's got Glenn Murray. I think he'll have a word to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm detecting possibly a German accent. I'm probably completely way out, but where are you calling us from? South Africa. <laughs> I'm the first there. I literally just typed in FPL, like first draft, and yours came up like first. Mm. So I thought, oh, well, I'll watch one of the live streams when it comes on. And then I thought, this is a bit long, isn't it? About two hours in. And then three hours later, <laughs> Well, an hour later, I was like, yeah, these seem all right, you know. <laughs> what Steven what? is not that bad. I have one, que- I have one question for you. I, I, want, um, I want you to predict the order of the Elite FPL ranking. So, like, <laughs> who, do you think will, who do you think will finish first, second, and third out of y'all three this season? So, it's certainly, no disrespect to Dan, but it's certainly going to be between me and Jason and... Right now, as it stands, I'd go with Jason because my history suggests that I'm going to be having a bad season. So I've got the uh, the five at the back. I just see a lot of value there. I feel like if I if I don't have Salah, I can spread the money elsewhere and maybe maybe get the points another way. Um, All the teams now, except for obviously Salah and Sterling, these players, a lot of players are going to change towards the start of the season just because of new transfers. Um, injuries that could happen and every, all of that. So for me to tell you now, like personally right now, I'd say definitely if Tammy Abraham or Batshuayi are cheap, I'd get one of them just because I don't care about the Man United we can score against them at least two or three. Hey guys, this season we're using Discord. It's a text and voice application where you can talk all things FPL with fellow community members. You can post your team in the Rate My Team, talk in the general chat. You can look at transfer news, look at awesome gifts. Sign up for our Cash Mini League, look at our previous podcasts, and even join us live on air in one of our streams. We look forward to seeing you guys. Link is in the description or look at the code on screen.